All right, this video is going to go over what an elasticity measure of negative 0.2 means. And so the structure of the video is basically going to go over the assumptions that need to be discussed to figure out what this elasticity measure of negative 0.2 means, uh, what the different significant values are, and uh, how you can use that to answer your questions in your econ classes. So first, if we're just given this elasticity measure of negative 0.2, uh, I have some questions for you. First, I'm going to assume that you're looking for the price elasticity of demand. Why am I going to assume that? Because that's the most common measure of elasticity that economists or economics classes are looking for. So in my other videos, I call this PEOD, price elasticity of demand. If we are looking at price elasticity of demand, a price elasticity of demand measure of negative 0.2 basically means that we have an inelastic price elasticity of demand, which means that quantity demanded is not very responsive to price changes. Why? Because for every percent change in price, the quantity will only go down by about negative 0.2 or 20%. So this negative 0.2 means that it is inelastic because it is greater than negative 1. It's considered inelastic. If it were less than negative 1, and this is a little bit confusing, but you could imagine like negative five or something like that, then it would be considered elastic. And this means that it would be very responsive to changes in price. Also, it's possible that the elasticity measure could be equal to zero, and this would mean that it's perfectly inelastic You could imagine a demand curve that looks something like this. No matter how much price changes, we're still going to buy it. So you could imagine something like medicine that's going to save your life. No matter how much the price changes, you're still going to be buying that. And then finally, uh, you still have to learn about it, but it's very rare in practice. You have a price elasticity of demand measure equal to 1. That means that you have a unit elastic demand. So now let's talk about what this negative means while you're looking at this number. So you have a negative 0.2. Essentially what that means is that you have a negative relationship between quantity and price. So you have your standard downward sloping demand curve. Now, what if we aren't talking about price elasticity of demand, but say we're talking about cross price elasticity of demand? So that means we're looking at two different goods. And here, if we have a negative sign in front of our cross price elasticity of demand, that basically means that as the price of one good goes up, the demand for the other good goes down, which means that they are complements. And then the magnitude of this value basically says how important they are as they're consumed together. If this ended up being a positive value, that would mean that they're substitutes. Okay, what about an elasticity measure that's looking at the income elasticity of demand? Here, we have this negative value, which means that as income goes up, we're actually going to see demand for the product go down, so it's going to be an inferior good. And then finally, we could have the price elasticity of supply. The fact that this is a negative value means that there's a negative relationship between price and quantity, so you have a downward sloping supply curve, which never happens in the real world. So. 
I can confidently assume that you are not looking at the price elasticity of supply with an elasticity measure of negative 0.2.